The Panasonic GH5 came out over three years ago. So at this point, the question is, is it worth the money or is it outdated? But I figured I would give it a shot and instead of just telling you my thoughts, I wanna show you. So let's try something. What is happening everybody? I'm Sam DeZeo, spelled exactly like it sounds. And if we haven't met before, this channel is all about empowering you to create content that actually makes a difference in people's lives. So today we are looking at the GH5, which I am actually shooting this on right now. Before I dive in too far, I just want to make it clear that there's a lot of channels out there reviewing cameras, and a lot of them focus on the specs or the very intricate details of a camera, and just know that's not how my brain works. So if you're looking for numbers, if you're looking for data, this is not that place. What I care more about personally, and maybe you're the same, is what does it feel like to use this camera? What are those things that I get frustrated about, and what are those things that I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you for putting this feature in the camera? Anyway, with that being said, the first thing I want to talk about is what it feels like to use this camera right here as a YouTuber. So one of the big important factors for me when I'm looking for a camera is a dang flip out screen. And can I just take a second to quickly rant with you here for a second, talking about the flip out screen. Is there any community of people who are inconvenienced by a flip out screen? I've never met anyone who's like, oh, I love the camera except that it has a flip out screen. If there are people out there, please introduce me to this group of people so I can pick their brain because it just seems like a no brainer thing to add. Okay, Sony. What is with like the A7S or the A6400 that it has like the flip out screen that goes up top? Like who does that help? Because here's the issue. If you put your road mic, your shotgun mic on top, what it's going to do is it's going to cover your flip out screen and at that point it's not doing anything for you. So the point of this whole rant is basically to say thank you Panasonic for having some common sense and including a flip out screen with your camera. I know that it sounds silly, it shouldn't be a big thing, but so many camera manufacturers haven't quite figured out how important that is, so Panasonic, thank you. Thank you for actually listening and caring about us. And also, since we're talking about big YouTuber features that are super helpful when you are shooting yourself, let's talk about autofocus here for a second. Am I gonna say it's the best autofocus you're gonna find on any camera? No. And if I'm being 100% honest, I'm actually a little disappointed in the autofocus on this camera. And I know that is a big thing for YouTubers. Is it so bad that it's a make or break for me as a content creator? Not quite but let me explain. I did a little bit of a test, which I do want to show you, but instead of getting into the nitty gritty of the things that I changed in the settings, like the sensitivity or the speed at which the focus changes, I don't, I'm not gonna get into all that, but I'm just gonna give you the results and see what we found. So in this test, we will be using a lens with a very shallow depth of field, and we'll change our f-stop settings to something very low, which will let in a lot more light, but that'll let our depth of field, or in other words, our place of focus, a whole lot more shallow. And we should also note that the autofocus settings right now are on face and eye detection. So one way to test autofocus is to look at the background and see that blurry part, how much of that is pulsing, how much of that is flickering. That's a good way to find out how much it is constantly changing the focus. In other words, you don't want the pulsing, and we are getting a little bit of pulsing. The thing that bothered me the most, though, is when I changed the settings around, it was like none of the results were repeatable. It it seemed like it was a problem every time, and it, it almost didn't feel like I was improving much. I was able to make the results worse, but I couldn't get them perfect. I couldn't dial them in. So if you are a super professional videographer who's working with big clients and like you rely on this perfect crisp autofocus every time for a paycheck, that's a problem. Maybe the GH5 isn't for you. But if you are a YouTube content creator, considering the price and, sorry, that was a loud bird. Considering the price and the deal that you're getting with this camera, it's a small price to pay. So I, I still think it's worth it, but it is something to note. But now let's talk about resolution for a second. And I don't wanna just talk about resolution just for the sake of talking about resolution, because remember, this channel is not about the numbers. It's about what does it feel like to have this camera? But let me throw a number at you. This camera can actually shoot 
above 4K, so like almost 5K. And at first you might be like, wow, that's really neat. But before you even go there, let's think to ourselves, what does that practically mean? Are you going to be editing in 5K? No, probably not. So why do you need 5K resolution? What is so nice about shooting in 5K and you downsize to a 1080p or even a 4K resolution, it gives you a lot of flexibility in editing. So you can crop in a lot without actually losing any quality. So how I've experienced this being used is when I do a run and gun shoot, I always try to stay a little bit wider. If I shoot too tight, I can't get those pixels around me back. But if I shoot wider, I can always crop in because I have that flexibility and I'm not losing any quality. And next, let's talk about frame rate. The frame rate options on this thing are awesome. In 4K, you can shoot up to 60 frames a second, so you can still get some slow-mo. It's not super slow-mo, but it is nice. And in HD, you can shoot up to 180 frames per second. And my goodness, look how buttery smooth that is. That is so cool. And that, to this day, actually makes this camera one of the best for high quality slow motion. And I'm not done, but just keep in mind that all of this so far is under $2,000. Wow. And next, let's talk about light sensitivity and how well it can handle low light situations. If you're a run and gun filmmaker like a YouTuber, you might not always have the perfect conditions to be shooting in. You might not always have the perfect lights and you're, you might just be working with what is around you. So knowing how well your camera can adapt to the different light conditions, especially in low light situations, is very important. And you want to be able to know how much noise is going to be introduced in your image when things start to get darker. And here's a test on your screen right now just to see how well it could hold up as we increase the ISO. And the GH5 actually does a pretty good job of making sure that there isn't a ton of noise even at high ISO levels. And something I really love about this camera, and I cannot say this enough, is how much I love the image stabilization inside the camera and the settings that it comes with when it comes to stabilization. It is so good. Personally, as a run and gun filmmaker, video maker, I always have, whether it's my monopod or a tripod or, or my Ronin S, I always bring something with me to make sure that my shot is stable because no one likes shaky footage. But ever since using the GH5, I actually found that I'm taking that stuff with me a lot less. So that's what we're talking about. That's the practical side of what this camera can do. It's, it's fancy and it's nice that it has internal stabilization, but the fact that it's so good means my backpack, the things I'm carrying around with me on a run and gun shoot is actually a lot lighter because I'm not, I don't have to bring everything with me to get decent shots. So if you are someone who very much is a run and gun filmmaker and you want the option of maybe not taking all these stabilization things with you and kind of lightening the load, this camera is such a good option for that reason alone. And I don't know about you, but I consider myself a YouTuber on a budget. I don't have this buttload of money to spend on lighting or cameras or even sound equipment or like even a new laptop every year. Like I, I, I can't do that. And you probably can't as well. And everything we've talked about up until this point goes into a under $2,000 price range, which is actually like an amazing deal. But I'm also thinking a little bit more long-term. I'm thinking lenses. This is a micro four thirds camera. So when I was buying this camera, I'm thinking, do I wanna go with this micro four thirds thing or do I wanna find a full frame camera? And what I noticed was lenses for full frame cameras are actually a lot more expensive than the micro four thirds lenses. So this isn't even a short term savings. This is the long term savings when I'm getting lenses and more equipment and gear for my camera. And of course, as I'm doing this, there's a train. This is what I deal with when I'm shooting outside. Goodness gracious. I put together this video set with a whole bunch of super old cameras just like this one. And it's still a work in progress. Admittedly, we gotta paint the walls and all that stuff. But make sure to click this video right here so you can see my process in coming up with this whole idea to begin with. A brand new video set with some really old cameras.